We, we welcome our audience, our live stream audience tonight. We start tonight our Shabbat service with the lighting of the candles of Shabbat. Bless your holy name and welcome in your Shabbat into our service. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam. Ashir ki dashanu, b'mitzvotah v'tivanu, lehiot or lagoyim. Vanatan lanu et Yeshua meshichenu or haolam. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with thy commandments and commanded us to be a light nations and who gave to us the greatest light, Yeshua, our Messiah, Seha Elohim. Greet everyone with Shabbat Shalom. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Great to be in the house of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's good. I just want to let our audience know that um, we are going to have our Kaddush tonight a Holy Communion, so you get your home ready with some bread and some wine or some juice so that we might together have communion in just a moment. Uh, during the meantime, we have a song or two that we want to sing unto the Lord. Let's love him tonight. Because of the present crisis that not only our nation is facing, but the world, uh, the coronavirus is now officially it is officially a global pandemic. And suddenly we find ourselves um, smitten by a plague of perhaps even biblical severity. And right now we are all presented with an unprecedented opportunity that we've never had before. An opportunity really to do something for God. And this opportunity, we don't want to pass it up because we may never have an opportunity like it's presented itself in our day to day. And it seems to me that when God, who inspired the psalmist in Psalm 53 and verse 2, he said, God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if they were any that understood that did seek God. Did you hear that? God looked down from heaven. So God looked down and he saw how the, the global power of that day was, was treating his people. And so he set a time out. He set a time out for his people while he dealt with that global power. And he initiated 10 plagues of diseases to force the hand of the world power and the system of that day. The 10 plagues of Egypt, also known as the 10 diseases, the plagues of Egypt, or the biblical plagues, are described in the book of Exodus chapter 7. The disease were 10 disasters, you might say, that were sent upon the global power by God to convince Pharaoh to free his people from the oppression they had endured for 400 years. And when God, when our God raised a man this man was not perfect, he was imperfect, but it was this man that God used to deliver his people, a people that are called by his name from the cruel bondage in a land that was filled with false gods. And, and he promised to show his wonders as confirmation of Moses' authority. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 20. And this confirmation was to serve at least two purposes. 
to show his chosen people that the, the Jews and to show also all who walk in righteousness that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob, Jacob, that he was alive and worthy of their worship and to show the Egyptians that represented the world powers that their gods were nothing, that the God of Israel will always have the final word. Listen tonight, as supreme ruler of the people, Pharaoh, who represents even Hasatan's effort to destroy God's people, was considered a god here on earth. The intermediary between the gods and the people. That's how the people saw him. In the big picture of the liberation of God's people in Egypt is that there first had to be 10 plagues before liberation would come. There had to be 10 plagues, 10 diseases. The global powers of that day had to experience these plagues before God's people would walk away free from the slave of chains of Pharaoh. And when Pharaoh came to the throne, he was instantly associated with the god Hor Horus. This was the god who had defeated the forces of chaos, supposedly, and restored order. But when this god was not god no more, he was associated then with Osiris. This is the god of the dead. And the biblical year, the new year of 2020, is going to begin this Thursday on March 26, 2020, which is Nisan 1. March 26, in the Hebrew calendar, is Nisan 1. And we find this new year's given in Exodus chapter 12 and verse 2, where God tells Moses, this month, Nisan, the month of Passover shall be for you the beginning of months. So the month of Nisan is the month of Passover. So this is next week, March 26, will be a new beginning for the Jewish people, a new beginning for those that have been engrafted, the engrafted seed. And I think also that heads of states, including the United States, are so focused on this COVID-19 that they have no idea whatsoever that what could be the meaning of any virus the meaning of any virus is actually God's way of forcing heads of states, forcing presidents, kings, and queens, and yes, billions of people around the world into a forced time out. Time out for divine guidance that we need for both the Jews as well as the rest of the world, for those that believe in God. It's almost like God says, I will put the world on time out. What could be the meaning of a virus forcing millions, millions into a time out, a time out of quarantine and seclusion and social distancing? other than God who is in all and through all is calling for global, listen, global repentance. First, those that are lukewarm need to come back to God. There's also those that are ice cold and God is calling them to come back for judgment begins first in the house of the Lord. And if we are being presented with an unprecedented opportunity 
to impact our world and our day before the coming of Messiah. The question would be, are we going to be thinking about ourselves or are we going to be thinking about someone else? And one of the big things in this hour is the integrity. The integrity of every believer. Are we going to trade in our spiritual integrity for our survival question? For that is exactly what is going on in the world around us. The elite media is trading in their integrity for, as the president put it today, splash news. And how sad it is that the people who care only for We who are the people of God, listen, we must stop and do a checkup on our faith. Are we? at this hour thinking more about ourselves or are we thinking about our neighbors and those who are in quarantine, in self-seclusion, and what about the elderly and those who are sick and are we thinking about them at this time? Have we forgotten that God has said he shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. And perhaps the truth is that we are thinking more about our survival than we are thinking about someone else's survival. But did God tell his people that they are that are called by his name. Did he not say in Deuteronomy 7, 15, the Lord will not lay upon you any of the terrible diseases you knew in Egypt, but he will inflict them on all who hate you. Are you kind of getting a little picture of why we may be going through this, why this planet Earth and billions of people are going through this time out. And I think one for sure that God is speaking to us as well that the Lord will not lay upon us his people that know him, will not lay upon him the terrible diseases that he put upon the Egyptians. But he says, he will inflict them on all who hate you. In Goshen, the, the Israelites lived there, and there was not one Israeli, one, one Jew, one person that we read about in the Holy Scriptures that was panic-stricken and began to hoard supplies. There was not one single Israelite that we read about in scripture that was afflicted with the diseases God put upon the Egyptians. And so why should we be afraid in this hour? God says he will not put those diseases upon his people. The 10 plagues the Egyptians suffered, presented an opportunity for total deliverance. There's a plague in this world today. There's a dark cloud out there, but I believe that it presents for us an opportunity that we may never have again to be used by our God to set at liberty countless of souls that are under bondage. And I look today at the sixth plague, the boils, uh, it was a judgment against the false gods and the judgment over health and disease. They worship a god by the name of Sekhmet and Sunu and Isis. These were their gods of health and diseases. And this time the Bible says that the magicians could not stand 
before Moses. Why? Because of that disease. The boils. Clearly, these uh, religious leaders also and magicians were powerless against the God of Israel. Or I go back again with the question, is it going to be about me? How do I protect myself? How do I take care of myself? The truth is that Hashem, our God, is watching us. He's watching what we're doing. He's watching what we're saying. He's checking up on our spirit during this time out. Before God sent the last three plagues, Pharaoh was given a special message from God. And I believe that God had already been speaking to leaders around the world. He had been speaking to the America, the American elite media that refuses to hear the voice of God. And now God is going to send these last three plagues. Pharaoh was given an opportunity to change. These plagues would be more severe than the others, and they were designed to convince Pharaoh as the present plague, I believe, is designed to convince the elite, the monster leaders of this world that have rejected God to convince Pharaoh and all the people of the world of that day that there is none like me in all the earth, saith the Lord in Exodus 9, 14. As an example of God's grace, it was when God warned Pharaoh like he has warned world leaders today, especially, I believe he has warned time and again the United Nations that has for years selected Israel for condemnation. God tells Pharaoh to gather whatever cattle and crops remained from the previous plagues and to shelter them from the coming storm. See, this is the mercies of God at work. Even with Pharaoh, he was willing to be merciful unto this man, unto this leader, unto this one that continued to reject God. And don't you think that the same God who warned Pharaoh is today warning world leaders, governors, mayors, presidents, city councilmen and women, leaders everywhere that if they do not change and repent and turn from their wicked, wicked ways, especially when it comes to Israel. Nations must repent now because there's a dark day that is coming. When it comes to Israel, that a dark storm will come and overtake them for what they've done to the people of God and the believing Christian community. And some of Pharaoh's servants heeded the warning according to Exodus 9 and verse 20, which says, whoever among Pharaoh's servant feared what Adonai had said, his slaves and his livestock escape into the houses. And so these folks that dared to fear and believe, they were able to escape with, with their livestock into the houses, while others did not. The seventh plague was the plague of hail. Attacked, a ha this hail plague attacked their god. The god of, was the god Newt their sky goddess, and also 
Osiris, their crop fertility god, and Set, their storm, and also Set was another of their gods, which is called their storm god. This hail was unlike anything that had been seen before. It was accompanied by a fire which ran along the ground and everything left out in the open was devastated by the hail and fire. But God again praised God. The children of Israel were miraculously protected. I want you to hear this again. With all this hail and with all these things that were coming in the boils and so forth, the children of God were protected. The eighth plague was locusts and again focused on Newt, another god, and it was a series again and set, the god set, and the later crops, the wheat and the rye, which had survived the hail, were now devoured by the swarms of locusts. And there would be no harvest in Egypt that year. The ninth plague, darkness was aimed at the sun god. The sun god, Re, R-E, who was symbolized by Pharaoh himself, who represents uh, Listen, like many leaders today, he represented the deep and the dark swamp. For three days of complete darkness stretched over the land of Egypt, but not over the land of the Hebrews who enjoyed light by day. It was so dark, it says, that the, the Egyptians could not see each other. Did you notice also how the recent Democratic contenders for the presidency were so divisive? Listen, they were so divisive that they were unable to see eye to eye during their debates. They were divided, they were at each other they could not see eye to eye and were almost to the very point of being aggressive toward each other. Folks, this is the spirit of the god of deep darkness, the sun god Re, who operates on the political elite who work in the deep swamp. And that's why you see and you saw those debates going on because they were in the deep swamp of darkness. And the tenth plague, the last plague, the death of the firstborn, male was a judgment on the Egyptian god, Isis. The protector supposedly of children. And in this plague, God was teaching the Israelites a very deep spiritual lesson that pointed to the Messiah. Unlike the other plagues which the Israelites survived by the virtue of their identity as God's people, this plague required an act of faith on their part. God commanded each family to take an unblemished lamb and kill it the blood of the land was to be smeared on, on, on the top and, and the sides of the doorways and the lamb was to be roasted and eaten that night. Any family that did not follow God's instruction would suffer the last plague. God describes how he would send the death angel through the land of Egypt with orders to slay the firstborn male in every household, whether human or animal. And the only protection was the blood of the lamb on the door. And when the angel saw the blood, he would pass over that house and leave it untouched. 
Exodus 12, 23. And this is where the term Passover comes. Passover is a memorial that the night in, in ancient Egypt when God delivered his people from bondage. And so now in the Brit Hadashah, in the New Covenant, New Testament, in 1 Corinthians 5, 7, it teaches that Yeshua, the Messiah, he became our Passover. And when he died to deliver us from the bondage of sin, he did so. And while the Israelites found God's protection in their homes, every other home in the land of Egypt experienced God's wrath as their loved ones died. And this grievous event caused Pharaoh to finally, finally release the Israelites. Do you hear what God is saying? Your day is approaching when you will finally, finally, finally be set free to worship the true and living God in the highways, in the byways, in the city and in the countries, in the mountains and in the valleys. Amen. Hallelujah. And by the time the Israelites left Egypt, they had a very clear picture of God's power, God's protection, and God's plan for them. For those who were willing to believe, they, were, they had convincing evidence. And God is giving us and will give you convincing evidence that they served the true and living God. That you serve the true and living God. But sadly, many still fail to believe incredibly, which led to other trials and lessons by God. And I ask you on this day of COVID-19, The entire planet has been called into a timeout. That timeout has to be from all distractions. So that's so that you may hear the voice of God. And if we see our government officials saying, close the bars, close the houses, of repute, close the theaters, something that you would never even imagine would come from the mouth of the heathen and those that are now shaking. Perhaps the fear that they have is more the fear of God than the fear of dying. But it says in Exodus 15, 26, if you will listen, carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes and pay attention to his commands and keep all of his statutes, then I will not bring on you any of the diseases I inflicted on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Please receive that. And if indeed that is true, then you will see the most awesome, glorious deliverance ever that you might have ever imagined would take place through your life in this time. Let us pray. Thank you, Abba Father. May this word quicken our spirit. And I pray, God, that you would lift up the spirit of fear from your people and release upon them the spirit of love for their neighbor. 
the spirit of hope, the spirit of a sound mind. This moment, that there be insurmountable healings taking place everywhere. I speak to the powers that be. Listen to the voice of the living God of Israel and you shall be saved for such a time as this. Hallelujah. Please don't leave us. We're just going to have communion right now. So I'm going to ask the gentleman to please come as we begin to partake of the Kadosh. Those of you that prepared at home the wine or grape juice or whatever juice you may have and some bread or crackers, please join us here together. We're going to lift up our cups unto the Lord first. And the Lord God said to his people, there could not be forgiveness of sins, except there would be shedding of blood. And we believe that the last living sacrifice was the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Barugata Adonai, Elohenu melek haolam, hamotzilek hemmin haaritz. How blessed are you, O Lord, our God. You are sovereign. You are majestic. You are the king, and you are the ruler of this universe. Abba Father, you are the fruit of the vine. Let us drink together. At home, please lift up your, your bread before the Lord. As I pronounce the blessings of everyone that is here, I would like for everyone to repeat this blessing in Hebrew and then in English. And you at home, you can do the same. Amen. Hallelujah. So we lift up this bread unto the Lord. Everyone, Barukata Adonai, Elohenu Melech HaOlam, Bori Pari Hagafin. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, sovereign king, ruler of this universe. You are the bread of life. Let us eat bread together. Do we have the song ready? You may have a seat here as we sing together. Thank you so much, those of you that had the opportunity to be with us. In about 30 minutes or so, we're going to have another short service 
and we welcome you to be part of it. Amen.